What? What, what, what? What the hell is this? Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. I see you shiver with anticipation. Let the show begin. Hey everybody, this is David Heretic coming at you with another edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. And tonight! Tonight! Alright, we're coming back to Bandmade. Yes, indeed, Bandmade fans, feeling you! Come on now! Here we go. This is a request from The Underdog, Bishal R, uh, Enera Owen, and Dana... Aswin. I hope I pronounced all those names right. They all want to see me write to the song by bandmate called Moratorium. Now, have I heard the song before? No, I have not. To the best of my knowledge, uh, this does not resonate with me in any way, shape, or form. However, there's always a possibility I may have heard the song in passing and I just don't realize it. So as always, if I start listening to the song and I suddenly go, Okay, yeah, I recognize this song. I'll let you know. That's the truth. You know me, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Okay, uh, we have a slight problem uh, with this video. Uh, the video link that they originally gave me is a dead link. Uh, I tried to download it, and it said there was a uh, problem with the uh, with the URL. So I went and go I went to the I went to the page, and sure enough, video has been taken down by YouTube for copyright claims. So good news, it. So I went looking all over the place. I found a whole bunch of reaction channels. <laughs> A whole bunch of reactors reacted to the song, but I couldn't, and I found a whole bunch of live versions, but uh, I just clicked in the middle of it and started playing, and the sound quality on all those versions were terrible. They were horrible. I did manage to find this. Um, there's a channel called uh, Intro to Classic Rock. Um, I had to do some editing to edit the guy out, but uh, he did like a little two-minute intro as to the, about the channel and what this song is and what it's about. So, I had to delete all that and keep only the video itself. So, sorry, but it's the best I could do, guys. I'm sorry, but this is this is it. Uh, this is all I could honestly find. Uh, this was posted by, like I said, Intro to Classic Rock is the name of the channel. And the video has 10,265 views. Whew, it was close, but uh, it'll get you there. It, it'll get you there. Not by much, but it, it will get you there. Other than that, there's really nothing else left to say. Link to the original video will be down below in the description for your viewing pleasure at your leisure. Let's get started. What do you say? Are you ready? Are you ready? Because here we go. All right, here we go. Bandmade Moratorium. Cool. All right, let's do this. All right, boy, let's do this. <laughs> Okay, there's two ways you can look at this. You can look at this, this verse section as straight time, and then they go down to half time for the pre-chorus and the chorus. Or, or you could base the bass tempo on the chorus and the pre-chorus, and the verses are in double time. You can look at it either way, honestly. I look at it as the first way. Um, 
I always like to base my tempo set on the first measure. So whatever the first couple measures are at, that's your bass tempo. All right. So you got that. The verses are this very quick tempo. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. What would that be? Not sure. So anyway, so you got these, you got the bass tempo here. It, it's a fast, upbeat pace, right? Uh, feels good. Has a double time feel to it, but it's not. It, 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 that's the straight time. It's that's how I'm interpreting it. And then they go down to the halftime feel for the pre-chorus and the chorus. Um, good approach. Really good approach. Smart approach. Um, no issue with that at all. Uh, the playing on this. Playing with the upbeats was nice. That was a good touch. Uh, that putting the placement on the and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and you know putting that putting the putting the placement on the upbeats which is really cool. Um, the popping and slapping from Misa was really nice. Uh, I just did a reaction, uh, just a little while ago to uh another band where the the bass player was popping and slapping the entire time, and. I actually mentioned Misa in comparison to her. I, I did, so that was kind of nice. Uh, what I like about Misa's popping and slapping is she does do it, and she does it well, but she doesn't do it the whole time. Like, she knows when to pop and slap in tasteful spots, and then she goes back into just regular picking, which I dig. I absolutely dig that. She knows when to pop. She knows when to slap. She knows when to pick, depending on what the song calls for. And that's that's very important. Um, uh, Psyche's vocals on this are really nice too. Let's, let's keep going. I'll, I'll talk more about her vocals in a little bit, but let's get back to the song. Nice little breakdown right there. Really nice. That felt really good. Um, I'm really glad they did that. That felt nice. It looks like we might be going into a guitar solo here, which is good. Right before a guitar solo. Good placement for it. Uh, I thought I mentioned Psyche's vocals earlier. Um, coming through very strong, very clean, very clear, right on pitch. Um, nothing sounding out, nothing sounding bad. So no complaints from me on that part. No, the song sounds really good. I'm digging the song. I'm digging the song. Um, if I'm being honest, have I heard better? Yes, I have heard better, but I've also heard weaker. You know, I, I would not say this is a weak song from them. Um, th I, I've heard, I, I've definitely heard songs from them that are a little weaker than this, but this is very, I, I would say it's a safe middle of the road uh, where, where this song is coming from. Uh, so far, so good. Anyway, now look. We still got another minute and 46 seconds here. You know, a lot can happen in a minute and 46. So we'll see what happens here. Let's keep going.
Nice little breakdown. Okay, first, let, let's go back to the solo first, okay? Uh, nice little solo from Konami. Not too long, not too short, just a really good amount to show off some talent, show off some ability, and always leave the crowd wanting more. Good on her part. The breakdown after, where you had uh, an opportunity for crowd interaction, and they took advantage of it, didn't they? Yes, they did. Um, Psyche coming up, leading the crowd with the, uh, 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 the, that whole, the vocal line, whatever the vocal line is, but getting the, engaging the crowd and getting them to sing along. Very nice job on her part. Um, the harmony is coming out of that really well done. Sounded really good. And then we go right back into the song again. Yeah. Nice. Nice section right there. Good transition from part to part to part. Transitioned into a guitar solo. Transitioned out of the guitar solo into the breakdown. Transitioned out of the breakdown into the, I believe it's the chorus. So, smart. Really good songwriting. Really good arranging and good execution on the lady's part. You can't ask for much more than that, folks. You really can't. Let's keep going here. It was really, it was a really nice job. Really well done. Um, it's going to be a short review. I have a feeling I'm not, I don't have a whole lot to say that I haven't already said. So I'm just going to make some key points and call it a day. <laughs> this is going to be a short review of a feeling. I'll see you there. We'll talk about it. Well, there you go, folks. That was band made with moratorium. This was a request from the underdog Bishal R Inera Owen and Dana Aswin. I hope I pronounced those names right. Okay. On a scale of 1 to 10, I am going to give that an 8.4. Yep. 8.4. I feel good about that score. Let me tell you why. Why? Okay. Um. First of all, did the ladies do anything that displeased me as a listener? No. Did the ladies do anything wrong? No. Did the ladies do anything bad? No. Uh, was the songwriting weak? No. Was the songwriting bad? No. Was the songwriting horrible? Absolutely not. Was the songwriting great? It, it was, but I'm going to be honest with you folks. I have heard better from them. And I've heard better from a lot of other bands too, um, but in particular, let, let's just talk. Let's take all those other bands and put them aside right now. Let's just talk about this band. Let's just talk about Bandmate. Have I heard better songs from Bandmate? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I absolutely have. Uh, does that mean that this song is bad? No, not by a stretch. Listen, I would not be giving a song an 8.4 if I thought the song was bad. Okay. If I thought the song was bad, this would be down in the twos and threes, okay? This was not a bad song by any stretch. All I'm saying is, there were other songs I have heard from Bandmate that I think are better than this one, okay? From a songwriting standpoint. Now, let's talk about this song. Let's talk about the songwriting of the song. I like how in the beginning, they established a set tempo and a set feel. Now, a little bit into the song, they transition from that feel into a halftime feel based on the feel of the intro. Now, that could be interpreted one of two ways. 
the introduction and the first verse, that's straight time. And then when they come down into that halftime, it is like a halftime feel. And that's that. Now, the other way you can interpret it is the, ver the, the chorus and the pre-chorus, that's the straight time. And the verse and the intro are double time feel. You can look at it either way, and either way would work. Either way would be right. Me, personally, I look at it as the straight time is established from the first measure. That's how I interpret it. So it was straight time for the intro and verse, halftime feel for the pre-chorus and chorus. That's how I interpret it. I'm sure there are going to be other people who interpret it the other way. They are not wrong. Okay, I'm not saying they're wrong. All I'm saying is that's how they interpret it, and this is how I interpret it. This, this is how it feels good to me. So, the only people who know for sure are bandmates. They're they're it. And unless you have talking, listen, <laughs> unless you are talking to them and you have spoken to them directly and asked them that question and they give you a direct answer, nobody knows for sure. Okay, not that it really matters. Um, the drumming on this was really nice. Um, uh, Akane has some great feels, nice feels, nice way of playing around with feel and establishing those feels. That's all up to the drummer more than anything else. I mean, it really is. It's up to the bass player and the, and the guitar players to stick with the drummer and help her establish it. But really, it comes down to Akane establishing those feels every single time in a way that makes sense and in a way that transitionally feels good and she did a great job every single time um misa her bass playing man i love her taste man i really do she knows when to pop she knows when to slap she knows when to pick and she knows how to make it transition just as smoothly as akane does on her on her drumming and playing with feel uh, same thing with Misa. She knows when to pick, and when she's not picking, she quickly folds that pick into her finger, and she goes into the popping and slapping. As soon as she's done, when she feels she's done, she takes the pick out and goes right back into it, smooth as glass every time. And like I said, it's not so much what you play. It's what you don't play that will make the difference between a really good player and a great player. And without question, Misa is a great player. She knows when to pick, when not to pick. She knows when to pop and slap, when not to pop and slap. And that is what makes the difference. Listen, you can sit there and you can pop and slap through an entire song. Nothing wrong with that, but what else can you do? You know, <laughs> what else can you do? Um, and like I said, though, when it comes to the popping and slapping, there's nothing wrong with it. If that's what you want to do the entire song, if that's what the song calls for, by all means, go ahead. But if you're able to differentiate your playing and know when to use which tool for which part, it shows another level. That's all I'm saying. Uh, the guitar playing on this. Uh, Mika's guitar playing, solid. It, it's solid. Nothing all that impressive, but it's 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 solid. And her backing vocals, on point, as always. Uh, Konami's guitar playing, very solid. Also, great little solo. I loved her solo because it was not too long. It was not too short. It was the, it was just the right amount, and you left the crowd wanting more. Now, was the guitar solo a complete and utter shred fest? No, but there were some shreddy parts in there. There were definitely some shreddy parts in there, but there were also some good sustains with some good vibrato, some good slides. Um, so it was really nice to hear all of that come together. Uh, Psyche's vocals on this, I think, were probably the highlight for me, in all honesty. Um, some of her best vocal work, if I'm being honest with you. I, I think I think this song really kind of allowed her to showcase her vocals in a very strong, forward way. Uh, now, have I heard more impressive things from her? I have, but sometimes those more impressive things have been... I mean, don't get me wrong, they're impressive, but I... I sometimes wonder if she sacrificed feel for ability. You know what I mean? Like sometimes she'll go up into the upper register and it gets a little pinchy where she could have stayed down and stayed fuller and stronger. On this song, the ability wasn't so much shown off as what she did with it. It's like, it's the old, it's the old adage. You have 
this much ability to use the song, right? And you use that much of it. Or, or you have this much ability using the song and you use all of it. Which one's more effective? I think in this case, it was, it was the latter. And I think that was the case here. She didn't do anything super impressive, like from a technical standpoint, but what she did, she did impressively. Do you see the difference? It's She took what she did and she made it amazing is what it really comes down to. Was what she did all that impressive? No, but it was impressively done. So that's all. Uh, and then, like I said, the songwriting, really nice song. Good groove, great usage of feel and uh, with, with playing with the feels. Um, switching seamlessly between... That straight time to halftime feel every time. Always dig on that. Um, no, look, this was, a, this was a great song. Was it their best? No. Was it their worst? No. Was it a bad song? I wouldn't be giving it an 8.4 if I thought it was a bad song. No, this was a great song. It was. Just not their best in my opinion. That's all. But an 8.4 is still a great score, and that is where we're going to stay. So, 8.4, final score. I have spoken. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. Hope you all enjoyed the show. Hopefully, I was able to entertain you. If I was able to put a smile on your face and brighten your day, then I did my job, and I'm so glad I could do it. If you guys want to join the fan base, go ahead and click on that button down there. If you guys want to like the video, go ahead and like the video. If you guys want to click the bell, go ahead and click the bell. It honestly doesn't make any difference to me, but if you guys feel like doing these things, then by all means, feel free to do so. Well, that's going to do it for the night, folks. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, this is David Heretic signing off, reminding you to stay fabulous and support each other. Later. Peace.